That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Stop Motion, the directorial debut of Robert Morgan, which premiered at the 2023 Fantastic Fest. Uh, it's being released courtesy of IFC Films on February 23rd, 2024. Directorial debut. Mm -hmm. Done a lot of short work. Nice. Mm -hmm. What is this movie about? A stop motion animator struggles to control her demons after the loss of her overbearing mother. Mm. What's your pull quote? Some fantastically creepy stop motion body horror ultimately isn't matched by its somewhat flimsy deliberation regarding a psychotic heroine. Mine. A novel idea that wears thin by the final act, stop motion left me wishing we had just watched the film within the film. Uh, so I... Like I just said, I enjoyed the stop motion component of the film. It was mm -hmm. very effectively creepy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Jan Svankmeyer films. So the story, there is a young woman named Ella, played by... Ashling Franchausi, who is probably best known for The Nightingale, which oh. is excellent. We've reviewed her uh, in a couple of turkeys, though. Uh, the Last Voyage of the Demeter and that bad Sandra Bullock film, The Unforgivable. Oh, well, Ella lives with her mother, and we see her mother's struggles. The mother is notable. Uh, Stella Gonet, uh, Gonet, who starred as Margaret Thatcher in El Condo. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the mother makes stop-motion films, but she suffers from arthritis, so she needs her daughter's assistance to actually manipulate the puppets. And we see the mother is overbearing is a good word. Uh, and the fussy. And fussy, particular. And she tells her daughter, like, I have to finish this film before I die. Which seems ominous, and it is, because then the mother has a stroke and ends up in the hospital. And I don't quite understand why, before the mother dies in the hospital, the daughter moves out of the mother's house into this, like, raggedy apartment. Well, where they've been filming. Oh, she didn't take her stuff there? I thought they were filming in that oh, area. Oh, okay. And I thought. Well, I might have missed that. Well, the mother dies, mm -hmm. and then the daughter is like, well, I have to finish the film. And mm -hmm. one day, this little girl shows up and, be, like, hijacks the production and says, oh, this is whack. I have a better idea. It's a story about a little girl who's scared in the woods and goes to a cabin, and this, like, monster called the Ash Man visits her three times. And Ella seems intrigued, so she starts doing the girl's ideas, and the girl's ideas get more and more creepy. But... After we meet the girl, I mean, you clocked it immediately. It took me, like, by the second meeting. But very early on, it's clear that this little girl is in Ella's mind. Ella has a boyfriend, and we see that she also interacts with the boyfriend's sister. Who works in a similar line of work. Which is seems highly coincidental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Ella's mental health devolves, and the people around her... Her, her boyfriend and the boyfriend's sister see the effects. She actually ends up killing both, of, both of them. Both of them in this paranoia that is partially the stop motion movie that she's making. So we kind of see these stop motion creatures, which are very well done uh -huh. and very creepy. But in the end, she sort of evolves into like one of the puppets, and then she's visited by the Ash Man. And we see the Ashman kill her, which I think is supposed to be representative of her killing herself. Yeah, because it's her doing the stop motion clicking while her body's on the ground and the life is ebbing away. So I think the symbolism and the story are very intriguing. Yeah. The overall concept feels inspired and I was really impressed with the stop motion aspect. However... And the practical effects. Yeah. Yes. However... I don't think I understood Ella well enough to I, see her just devolve so insanely. Well, it's but, like we we almost needed just a moment or two more with her mother to kind of understand some things because I felt like I was filling in a lot of holes. Uh, and when when I like you did a very good job filling in the holes, but I feel but like <laughs> but I, that came out weird. Thank you. But I, I I liked your theory on maybe what Ella was going through. But I wish the film would have explained it better because you think that the little girl... I think the little girl is uh, the moment in time when she stopped being a free creative child because we learn from Ella that she sees herself as more of just a technician. She's not creative. She has no voice of her own. And so this child who does have a voice of their own, who's actually dictating the ideas, she's using the child as a cipher 
like uh, she, she's like disassociating a bit uh, to go back to a time w when she felt like her own self. But I kept thinking that we're gonna get into some kind of metaphor about the Ash Man being a person, probably a man that sexually molested her as a child, I don't know, but it never really goes there. Yeah, I thought that the young girl was like representative of like that period where she lost her innocence maybe, yeah. and that the Ash Man is responsible. But we don't get any of that, it's I, just... I mean, I don't need to see a Christina Crawford experience. No. But uh, th like just something that makes it make sense that why she would just fall immediately off the deep end. Because, uh, you know, I, I, all of these women in madness films from the 60s and 70s that are classic templates directed by men, uh, but Polanski's Repulsion, like, I, I sh want to feel that darkness, or uh, Robert Altman's Images, where, and that also has a creative childlike storytelling about it because I think Suzanne York's writing a children's book. Anyhow, I, I think that there's just some kind of component that could have made this a little stronger in that arena. Well, especially because because we don't get really we don't get any background on Ella and her relationship with her boyfriend seems fine. Like there doesn't seem to be any peculiarities that would indicate that she has some post traumatic stress or trauma that she has baggage with or of. But for <laughs> but I think because the mother is just seen as kind of overbearing it, it, it just left me thinking is she broken because her mom is like this because the mom doesn't seem that bad is it just that yeah it, it seems I feel like, like I'm like that sometimes <laughs> so she's not that bad <laughs> yes that's that being said I think uh, Ashlyn's performance is fine she she was reminding me of so many people in this because I kept getting, like there were flashes that were making me think of 70s era Jessica Harper, but mixed with Alice Englert or um, Lily James. Okay. I think where things get real creepy is when the little girl is starting to say like, oh, your puppets would be better if you used raw meat. First she brings out a steak, yeah. And then like some roadkill and, and, it is very effective. They look very creepy. And eventually herself, because she cuts out a piece of her thigh. Yes. And then the little girl says something like, oh, most artists put themselves in their art. Which reminded me kind of like uh, William Blake, how he would use like urine and animal blood in his paintings. I almost think that I would have preferred like maybe the character of Ella, like it becomes really fantastical and she is with, like she's in and, and the story. There are moments like, where it's doing that, where she's at the end. She's become like this wax yeah. figure that's running, and I don't. Those are really elaborate, fantastic. I, and they're. That's where the body horror parts feel the most interesting. Like she is becoming the substance that she's yeah. working with, and when that ash man towards the end is like, kind of tearing apart her waxy face. That was very well. It done. It looks very good. Something else that was lost on me is we're told by the little girl that the Ash Man comes over three nights. So then I was, I kept trying to figure out like, is her descent into madness happening in stages? And are those stages corresponding with the three visits from the Ash Man? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that they might be, but it wasn't very clear to me. Mm -hmm. Because there's a one point where Ella's resisting the little girl at first. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and the girl's like, okay, well, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story. And right. it's, it's almost like I wanted it to not be obvious, but this little girl is leading her back into her own psyche to these moments that she's blocked, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted something more, a little more sustenance with that. When we see Ella kill her bo boyfriend and the sister, that was pretty dramatic. It's pretty violent. With, yeah. The, the sister is also a big problem because, again, she it's like she's siphoning off... Um, ideas from Ella's project because she does something similar and, and I thought that was I, I don't know I, there, there's a different there's a more elegant way I think that kind of tension could have been developed Ella's psychosis becomes extremely clear at a point when Ella goes to see her boyfriend's sister at like a nightclub and asks for drugs and then all of a sudden she sees like some guy's head gets split open and then the little girl pops up dressed like a clown so then it was like oh okay if, if you couldn't tell before it's very clear well whatever go, is going on at this party and that clown that's being projected on some screen and some like a room, puppet clown like okay uh but also what drugs were they yeah so i know not to do them 
<laughs> because that's the convenience of not explaining. She just asked for drugs and the sister just pulls out a little, a little baggie and she takes whatever's in there. The ending where I presume it's supposed to represent Ella killing herself, we see her going like as her puppet into a satin box. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that symbolism. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, she just... In contrast to the, like, the scary woods that the Ash Man and the little girl were in, to now she's in this beautifully ornate satin box like that felt so comforting and lovely mm -hmm. so really strong visuals a very interesting idea that reminded me of uh what happens to croy grace moretz and greta if you get shoved in that box anyway that's uh, right yes and, and i like that finality of it too like that's the final moment and i, I don't know it's just it's a little disappointing because there's so much going for it um in, in a lot of ways that I really enjoyed. That being said, I would recommend it, and I would definitely watch this person's next film. Oh, for sure, yeah. What would you give Stop Motion? Two and a half. I would give Stop Motion two and a half out of five. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>